Ever since the time of Euclid, mathematicians have been putting in things like definitions and theorems and proofs in their books or papers or whatever it is that they're writing. And they're just ways of breaking things up into logical chunks that are easy to digest. So very, very important skill to learn how to do this in LaTeX. Um, these types of things, by the way, are what we call enunciations. And suppose I wanted to put that in quotes. If I typeset this, you'll see that it won't be quite right because this guy here is pointing the wrong way. Okay, so we build our quotes in a slightly different way in LaTeX. We go ding ding with that guy and ding ding with that guy. Those are on the tilde key and the double quotes key. And uh, they will give us the right sort of um, quotation marks there. Okay, let's start with a theorem. So in order to put in a theorem, notice that I'm in the AMS art document class here. Somewhere in my preamble, I want to go new theorem and I'm going to put in theorem and theorem. And you might be saying, well, why am I writing that twice? This first thing is the way that I'll write it in my code. This second thing is going to be how it shows up in the compiled document itself. All right, so let's begin a theorem. And of course we want to end our theorem as well. So we'll put in Pythagoras, I guess, in a right triangle, we have, okay, and I'm gonna go into maths mode. So forward slash open square bracket, forward slash closed square bracket. And because I'm sort of in an environment, I'm going to tab across. And I'm going to write a squared plus b squared equals c squared like that. Full stop because we are ending a sentence. As I've said a few times, we don't want to just throw away punctuation because we're doing maths. We can't do that. Okay, so that's theorem number one. We never had to say it was number one. It just knows that's the first theorem we've put in. Of course, if we had another theorem, then it will say, hey, the second one is theorem number two. And I think you get the idea. Okay, so that's how theorems work. When you've got something like a theorem, very, very good idea to label it. So forward slash label, THM, and then a nice name. So colon, a nice name that's gonna be easy for us to remember in a few week's time and it'll be easy for our collaborators as well to know what's going on. Let's call it THM colon Pythagorean theorem. Now, of course, if we compile our code now, nothing will change. It's still going to look the same as it did before. But now that we've got that label, we can call on it. So an example is shown in theorem and capital T here, because this is the name of some theorem, capital T tilde forward slash ref. And then because we've labeled it so well, we're going to know which one. There's a bit of a bug, I think, in Overleaf that doesn't give us all of our label. I don't know why that's happening, but whatever. Okay, so we'll compile that. And we never said that it was theorem one. It just knows, hey, that is the first one. And there it is right there. Okay, so that's how theorems work. Uh, another thing that we want to put in, again, going back to the time of Euclid, are things like definitions. So definitions are really good at the start of a paper. We want to define our terms and the things that we're going to be using in our paper so that it's clear in our heads, but it's also clear in the heads of our readers. Okay, so forward slash theorem style because these are going to be in a slightly different style. We're going to use a definition style as opposed to a theorem style. We'll see the difference between those in a moment. Okay, so theorem style definition and then new theorem definition definition. Again, first thing is going to be the thing that we actually type in our code. Second thing is going to be the way it's going to actually typeset. All right, so we'll come down here and we'll put one in. Okay, begin definition. 
end definition. Uh, okay, uh, a right triangle is one in which one of the angles at a vertex is a right angle. Pretty good name. Okay, a right triangle is one in which one of the angles at a vertex is a right angle. Okay, so we've got definition one. Same sort of thing applies, of course, if we had lots and lots of definitions in our paper, then it will know, hey, you're talking about definition one or two or three or wherever we're up to so far. Again, exactly the sort of thing that we'd want to label. So let's do that. And yeah, it takes a little bit more time to write our code if we do this, but it it's like a stitch in time saves nine. Hopefully I've got the right <laughs> turn of phrase there. Um, a, a little bit of time spent here on this sort of stuff behind the scenes work is really gonna help um, down the track. An example, or now we've got a couple of examples. So examples, are shown in definition tilde forward slash ref. There it is, right triangle. And theorem blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we've got labels. We can refer to our labels as and when we want to. Okay, a few other things that we might want to do. I think it's a good idea to give a bit more explanation. So here we can put square brackets and we can say, this is a definition about right triangle. Okay, so let's see how that works. When we compile that, not only will we have definition one, but we'll say, hey, this definition is about right triangle. That's really useful if our, our reader's skimming through our paper or coming back after getting to you know, deep into the paper, they want to quickly be able to find this sort of information. Uh, whereas this one here, we will name this Pythagoras. Like that. Okay, now I hope you can see the difference now between the definition style and the theorem style. In the theorem, we've got italic type here. Whereas in the definition, we've got Roman type. Uh, so that's uh, just something that I thought I might point out. By the way, um, it's good practice, if you can, to put a proof after a theorem. So we've, we've said that this is true. We've said that this is a theorem. We should really offer proof. Okay, so I'm going to begin a proof environment. I'm going to end a proof environment. Just because we don't have enough time here, the proof is left as an exercise for the reader. Ho, ho, ho. So let's see how that one type sets. Now we've got italic type here for the proof, uh, for, the, for the, the word proof, and then this is in just Roman type. And notice how we've got a tombstone here to say, hey, we can, we've finished with that now, let's go into something else. Okay, um, now, there are various other things that you could do with these types of things. So for example, you can say, hey, I don't want it to say theorem one or definition one. I would like that to keep tabs with whichever section I'm up to. So if we put in square brackets here, section, this sort of optional argument here, when we compile it now, it's going to say theorem 2.1 just because we're in section two. So this should be theorem two point something. Uh, same sort of thing can be done with definitions. Okay, we can say, hey, we're in section two, and therefore I would like this to be called 2.1 in the sense that it's the, the first one uh, in that section. And just to, well, I think you get the idea there. You can even go down to the level of subsections. Um, so here we go. We could put in a subsection here inside our 
section. And now uh, that subsection you can see is right here. It's called, it's, we're in section number two, we're in subsection, subsection 2.1. And now what we can do is we can say, hey, no, let's make these go to the level of subsections. Um, not that in a short paper, it's something that you'd necessarily want to do, but you might want to have that sort of level of precision. We're in section two, subsection 2.1. So this is the first theorem in subsection 2.1. Okay, so that's how to get started with theorems, definitions, and proofs. Uh, should I put it in here? Why not? There's also something called a remark. I don't know if this is going to be useful for the paper that we're writing, guys, but may as well put it in here just for the completeness sake more than anything. Sometimes mathematicians like to give sort of an informal remark. Um, so begin remark. Uh, it's a bit cheeky. How do you spell cheeky? <laughs> e -E. It's a bit cheeky to ask the reader to prove it. Everything. Something? Everything? I'm not sure. And that is a, a slightly different sort of way that that sets things out as well. Okay, there we go.